Okay, yeah. So as promised, it's 3 p.m. now. We're going to start our session proper. But before I hand over the time to our speaker today, there are some house rules that we want to share with you. So for today's topic, it's going to be on fall risk or like, you know, fall prevention. So later on, if let's say you have any questions related to this topic today, you want to um, send this question to our speaker so that she can address at the end of the session. You can use our Q&A platform. So if you wonder where is this Q&A platform, um, right at the bottom of your phone or your um, laptop, you should see this two speech bubble that says Q&A. Click on that, a window will pop up and that's where you can submit your questions. If you're wondering why there's no um, audio or video functions that um, like the usual Zoom meeting session, so just to let you know, it's a webinar session and it's going to be a recorded session. So if you are not able to find any um, audio or video function, it's because it's being disabled. So if you have any questions, as mentioned, do submit via the Q&A platform. And at the end of the session, please do not rush off because we do hope that you can help us fill our survey form where we can gather some feedback from you so that we can improve our health talk sessions and to do better the next time. Right, so without further ado, I would like today uh, sister yen ling to take over the talk and she will be sharing on the title stepping into a healthier you for prevention tips for the elderly sister yen ling please thank you good afternoon everyone my name is yen ling i'm the four nurse clinician specialist from tan tok Seng hospital <laughs> Oh, yeah, just give me a minute. Yeah. Today, I'm going to share with you how to keep yourself healthy by having some fall prevention tips for the elderly. Today, I'm going to run through with you the importance of fall prevention, common risk factors leading to fall, fall prevention tips for the elderly. So, why is for prevention so important. You can see these three groups of elderly. They are like exercising, dancing, singing, or doing what they want to do. So normally we want to live a more quality life as we age, to be independent as much as we can. So how do we want to achieve this? That's why fall prevention is very important because it not only can prevent injuries resulting from falls, injuries we are talking about are fractures and when you are having some internal brain injuries. So all this can cause us not to be independent. You have to depend on other people to take care of us. And if there is no carer, we might have early admissions to the nursing home. That's why there is the importance of fall prevention. Before I teach you some of the fall prevention tips for the elderly, let me run through some common risk factors leading to falls. As we age, we might experience some of the changes. Things like, you might wonder how come your eyes become so blurred. As we age, our vision becomes less blurred, uh, sorry, less clear. So therefore, sometimes we might have some eye diseases like glaucoma or cataract like what you can see on the screen, that make your vision to be quite blurred. Not only that, our hearing actually will become declined and we cannot hear what other people are talking. And we also cannot enjoy our favorite music or drama. Therefore, communication tends to be decreased and we can't actually... Um, enjoy what we want to do and people don't want to talk to you so maybe our memory might also decline because of that our limbs also become decreased sensation you might have a feeling that you are walking on ice every time when you walk barefooted or when you are buttoning your clothing or picking up the food via the chopstick so you might have difficulty in doing that we might have loose tooth or decayed tooth and we actually have dentures fitting. But then sometimes the dentures might not fit our mouth so perfectly. 
we might have some sensation loss of the taste buds, and we may have difficulty in swallowing. If all these changes might decrease our appetite in eating, we might not want to eat so much, and we can't actually tolerate food anymore. For some of us, we might experience frequent urge to go to the toilet or because we have the fear that we might leak out urine because some of us might have muscle loss around the area or some condition. So we want to go to the toilet very often. So sometimes when we laugh or sneeze, the urine might also come out. And as a practice, most of the elderly, when they see toilet, they want to go to the toilet very fast. We might also have loss of muscle mass as we age. So with this loss of muscle mass, we become weaker and cannot balance well. We might also become more inactive and the cycle goes on. And because of the weakness and imbalance, we tend to walk slowly and more cautiously. Our response to things like ongoing traffic, if the car is coming on to you, or someone not onto you, or a cyclist just ran onto you, you might not be responding as fast as when you are younger. Our bones might become more fragile. So there is this condition where we actually lose more calcium rather than retaining of the calcium and make our bones more fragile. That is osteoporosis. And with osteoporosis, the risk of getting fractures is increased risk. Our spine and our joint might become degenerative. So we might have arthritis. And throughout the years, if we have pain or... Um, difficulty in walking, so we might try to adapt our walking to the deformity and this actually leads to more defam the deformities of the hands, legs and feet. We might also have chronic disease over the years like high blood pressure. Like in Singapore, it's actually quite common to have the three highs, the high blood pressure, diabetes or high cholesterol. If it's not well controlled, we might develop stroke disease over the many years. We might also have heart failures or kidney failures as a result of that. And sometimes we might have memory loss, which is like you might commonly hear one is the dementia. Sometimes because of all these age-related changes or chronic condition, we might still not fall down. However, some acute condition might increase our risk. Conditions such as cough, flu, which is quite common, fever, infection. Sometimes we are become weaker when we have all this condition and we do not feel like eating and become weaker. Or we are taking some medicine for all this condition, making us feel giddy and drowsy. Giddiness can also arise from low blood sugar and low blood pressure. Sometimes we might be bleeding somewhere, so we are feeling giddy, weak, or having breathlessness. Or sometimes you will have sudden weakness on one side of the body or the legs, which is a result of acute stroke. Because of all this acute condition, you might have increased risk of falls. All those that I've spoken just now are the internal factors that is affecting our risk. How about our external factors? So external factors like the environment, medications, our behaviors, our footwear, as well as the walking aid actually increase our risk of falls. Environment. Some of us has a habit of keeping, keeping things we do not want to throw away or we can't bear to throw away because of, um, of important values but all these become clutters in our environment so it actually cause the cluttering actually cause can cause trips uh, tripping hazards around in the house sometimes we spit water or we use very wet mop to mop the floor so all this also increase our risk of falls if we don't actually clear the spill immediately when you are outside the environment like the lighting 
might not be so adequate when you're outside. It might be very dark. And you might have stairs that is like very steep without any handrails. In the house, normally the house that we grow up with or we are like um, staying in there for many years does not have quite a lot of risk when you're younger. But as you grow older, you might find that all this environment, um, normal things are like the stairs and the toilets without grab bars, the steps or the curbs towards the toilet, or even the environment, the lighting is not adequate, might increase your risk of falls. See this, you might find this conversation very familiar. Hey, this painkiller I take very good. I give you some, you can try, try la. I think I have forgotten to take the morning medicine. Maybe I should. Maybe I should um take others people. I should take together with the night medicine. I hope I heard from the I heard from my friend that the medicine for my cough is very good. So sometimes we might do this, huh? So but we without knowing that actually there are many side effects of medications. Sometimes we do not follow the prescriptions. Like if the doctor asks you to at, at certain timing, how many tablets, sometimes we do not believe in what the doctor say or we think that our condition is well controlled and we do not want to follow. Sometimes maybe because we are like forgetful, so we can't remember to follow the prescription. Also tends to, you know, place the medicine in another medications package or container. So we get confused ourselves because by reading the label, it actually belongs to another medicine. We also tend to take over the counter medications because we, that is actually very good. So it's actually quite common to take over the counter medications nowadays, but we do not know whether they, they have any interactions with your current prescriptive medicine. Also, sometimes we will try to try to um, try friends' medicine or if um, your spouse is taking some medicine and she's, she or he is no longer taking and you think that you, you, you don't want to waste the medicine and try to take their medicine. So all this actually increase our risk of falls without knowing what are the side effects or interactions that we, when we take the medicine. So as you can see, some of the, our, actually our behavior we grew up with is our habit. Uh, it's very difficult to change. But if with all the age rated changes and chronic condition, you might find face that is very difficult to carry out this task like before. Like we'll stand on the ladder or chairs to change a light bulb or overreaching to a higher or to the things uh, that is on top of the cupboards or standing on a chair to reach for it. Sometimes we actually, um, most of the times, we will actually try to stand to wear and remove the pants, which is actually quite normal for us. But as you don't have balance or weakness, this actually increases our risk of falls. Um, some of my elderly patients, they actually still do laundry on their own. They want to wash their laundry, so they will sit on the plastic low stool. But then because they have weakness, then they might not be able to stand up properly or they might sleep because of, of the slippery and wet floor. Or they might hang very heavy laundry out onto the out of the window. So this actually causes imbalance and they fall down. Other things like if you are like not steady, then we try to rush to answer the phone call. As you can see, the lady actually rushing across the road. I noticed that in Singapore, most of the people are in a rush mode. Nah? So we will tend to want to rush to catch the bus or MRT. We want to rush across the road. There's no cars. And then when the traffic light is like green man flickering, left only a few seconds, we want to rush across the road. Singapore, you can notice that most of the population's people are actually on the phone all the time, even when they are like uh, on the escalator, walking. So 
most of the time when we our reactions become slower, we might not be able to do a lot of things at the same time, such as talking on the phone, walking, or carrying a lot of groceries, and then trying to balance yourself, or looking for hazards on the ground. So this actually increases our risk of falls. I also noticed that some of the elderly likes to sit on the upper deck of the bus. So it's actually quite dangerous, especially when your balance is not so good. So when the bus is moving, then you climb on top of the upper deck. Now. So this actually increases our risk of falls. For our footwear, in Singapore, our favorite pastime is actually to wear slippers now because it's real convenient and it's easy to put in and take out as well. But slippers is actually quite lightweight and some of them actually their anti-sleep properties is not so good. Actually can result in sleeps. Because our sensations of the limbs that I talked earlier on is actually diminished, is actually declined. So actually when we wear the slippers, we may not feel it to wear it uh, or we might not wear it properly. So it might cause some trips as well. For ladies, of course, some of us will prefer to wear um this quite fanciful or uh, high heel or uh, type of um, slip on sandals. So, but then um, all this actually will cause us to lose our balance more easily because of the high heels property. For guys, um, leather shoes they likes to wear a size many of my patients actually likes to wear a size bigger because they find it more comfortable but if you have like um difficulty in lifting up your feet you might find that you are actually dragging the shoes huh? so that can actually cause tripping and slipping hazards as well and when we wear our favorite sh shoes for many many years then we forgot to check that whether the soles has actually worn out or not and this can cause another sleeping hazards for walking aid most of the elderly in Singapore will be using umbrella when they are not walking steadily because they're scared that they might fall down also because umbrella they can actually use to stop you know when it's raining then they can use it now. But then, is the umbrella suitable for you if you are not steady at all? So, is it appropriate for you when you are not steady? Sometimes, your children might buy a lot of walking aid for you, thinking that you are not steady and encourage you to use it. But have you learned how to use the walking aid? Is it of an appropriate height? Is it of the type of walking aid that you require? And like the shoes, do we really check the stoppers to see whether is it worn out so that we can actually change? So after knowing all of the risk factors that is leading to increased risk of falls, of course, some of the um, risk factors that we cannot modify and change it, but there are definitely quite a number of them that we can actually try to modify or prevent it. So let me share with you some four prevention tips. Number one, protect our vision. How do we do that by protecting our visions? It's encouraged that you check your eyes at least once a year. By checking your eyes at least once a year, we can actually detect the eye diseases like cataracts or, gly or glycoma at an early stage and sometimes maybe cure for the eye diseases. It's also encouraged for you to use single distance glass. What I mean for single distance glass is compared to the bifocal, where you have either the near vision, both our near visions and the distant glass together. Sometimes it will actually cause um, the elderly difficulty to see the steps very well. So a single distance glass, like a pair of near vision glass, like or the distant glass when you are having a short-sightedness will be better in that sense. Avoid going out at night if your vision is less clear because the outside environment and cannot control the lighting. So it's actually quite risky if you still go out at night if your vision is not so clear. 
Around in the house, it will be good to maintain good lighting around the house. Most of my patients actually say that their house are very bright, especially the HDB. They say the corridor light is very bright, shining into the house. Actually, if your vision is actually quite um, not so clear, you'll be encouraged to have a night light around the room and just the toilet. Or you can have a sensor type of night light that you can use to, it's a plug on type. Lah. So um, the electricity um, might not be so uh, wasteful lah, if you're talking about you know, wasting electricity. So for like curbs or steps, sometimes we will use those like um, anti-slip um, colored strips huh, that we can actually highlight at the edge of the curbs or steps. So that when you cross over, you can actually um, highlight to yourself that you are actually crossing a curb uh, so that you might not miss the curbs or steps. Our hearing, like I say, is very important for us. It also control our balance and our communication. If you have actually declined in hearing or you constantly hear some ringing sound over the years or there are like some um, discharges coming out from the ear, or some spinning type of giddiness, you might want to ask your doctor to refer you to the ear, nose, and throat doctor. Sometimes you might need a hearing aid. So the hearing aid can actually help you to maintain your communication and therefore your memory can also have some, um, you might not decline because, because, because people don't want to talk to you because you are hearing impaired and they talk to you, you can't answer them or can't hear them or you yourself become more frustrated. Sometimes we encourage, you can see at the side here, these are what we call the pocket talker, the communicator. They are actually sound amplifier. So this part actually, um, you put over it like the previously, the Walkman. So they can actually hear like their favorite uh, drama or the music from the radio or people can talk to you through this uh, speaker here. Some of the, my elderly like this because it's um, less artifacts than the hearing aids and probably less costly than the hearing aids. For your nutrition, you'll be encouraged to have a regular three times a meal, um, healthy and balanced diet. So you eat from a variety of food source, like you can see here from the healthy plate. Nah. So you can take a variety from the rice, fruits and vegetables, as well as the meat and other products. Keep yourself hydrated. Most of the elderly, if they have no heart problems or kidney failure, they should be able to drink at least six to eight cups of water in the daytime. Most of the elderly do not drink enough because they think that if I drink a lot, I might go to the toilet or you know they, they are not thirsty at all because you know they, their thirst center also not so good. Huh? So they can't feel the thirst. So they don't want to drink or they... they they don't feel like drinking. It's actually encouraged to drink for a normal elderly so that your kidney might not fail. And then also the kidney might be dehydrated like, if you don't have enough water. And sometimes when you change position, the blood pressure might drop. So that might cause giddiness. So it's actually quite uh, brutal to actually drink um, quite a number, uh, six glasses at least per day unless your doctor's advice otherwise. Okay, talking about bone health, so we prevent osteoporosis for drug bone. If I can't reduce the risk of falls, then can I build up my bone so that if in case I touch wood, I fall down, I can actually prevent some fractures? So how do I do that? Um, I have to actually ensure adequate intake of calcium-rich food. What do I mean by calcium-rich food? Things like milk and milk products, soybean, soybean products, green leafy vegetables, as well as um, the sardines uh, with the bones, are uh, all calcium-rich food. So we try to take as much as possible, if you can tolerate, and get at least 15 to 30 minutes of sunlight a day. Without sunlight, our vitamin D uh, might be decreased. Sometimes we'll actually, uh, we cannot absorb the calcium very well into our bones. We should also actually avoid... Uh, excessive intake of smoking and alcohol intake because all this can actually prevent us from um, the bone density uh, might become more um, lower 
if we have like smoking, excessive smoking or alcohol intake. Okay, so on top of that, we have to exercise moderate intensity at least 30 minutes each time, five times a week. Exercising not only improves our balance and keep our strength, can also actually help us to prevent osteoporosis. Exercises such as weight-bearing or resistant type of exercise. Weight-bearing exercises, anything that you do when you stand, like brisk walking or sit to stand, all these are considered weight bearing or climbing of the staircase. Resistant type of exercises think about if for the arms will be like a modified push up against the wall or resistant exercises such as using the resistant bands training. For younger population, they can look into like weight um, machine training or they can do things like Zumba dancing. Yeah, so all these are considered weight bearing and resistant exercise. For us to build our bone, we need to have um adequate intake of calcium plus vitamin D from the sunshine, as well as exercising weight bearing and resistant type of exercises. All this can actually help us to prevent the osteoporotic condition. Speak to your doctor if you're concerned that you may have fragile bones or speak to a physiotherapist to find out which activities are safe for you. For medications-wise, try to know your medications and its side effects. Take note of the medications that may cause giddiness and drowsiness. Try to follow the instructions of its med medications. Huh? Do not consume other people's medications. This you can see on the left side here is actually the pill labeled pill box. So most of the time we are asked at my office to actually pack the pill into the pill box from Monday to Sunday. They can segregate into like morning, afternoon, or night. So they can actually remember to take your medications, especially if you are like quite forgetful. So this can actually remind you to take medicine or if you forget, then you can actually have a look into the box and see whether you have forgotten to take your medicine. Keep your medication in the original bottle or packet so that you can have a reference. You will not be, become more confused. Below here, I have some um, uh, pictures on the pill box with alarm systems. Uh. So some, um, most of the elderly nowadays have handphone. Uh. So you can actually set an uh, alarm in your handphone as a reminder to remind yourself to take medicine. So um, these are the gadgets for those like maybe um, elderly who does not have handphone. The caregiver can actually pack the medicine in the box and set the alarm. These are easily available on the online shopping platform like uh, Amazon, Shopee, Lazada. Or um, here, I think our locally have a uh, senior care, which uh, also have all these products. Huh? Okay, it's good to keep a list of medications that you take regularly so that you can keep track of the changes that the doctor actually made every time you visit them. Try to throw any unwanted or expired medications away so that you will not become confused. Visit your pharmacist if you have any problems in managing your medications. Also, I want to remind the elderly that don't try not to take a lot of medication at one go. If the prescription is like for six months or one year, try to take like maybe two monthly or three monthly if it's convenient for you. Because if not, sometimes when there is a change of medications, you cannot like um exchange the medications or give the pharmacist back. And then you will end up having a lot of medications at home. So for elderly, most of the time, we have this giddiness when we change position, especially when you lie down and you get up very fast, or you sit down to drink a cup of kopi, or chit chat with your friends, or watch your favorite drama for four to five hours. And then when you stand up, you feel giddy. So what you should do is actually slowly change your position. From lying down, you should actually sit for a while before you stand, okay? How do we then manage our urinary problem if you have like, just now when I say you cannot control your urine or you have urge in passing urine, try to drink the water in the daytime instead of like at night. 
So stop drinking two hours before your bedtime so that nighttime you don't get up often to pass urine and disrupt your sleep. Avoid consuming caffeinated drinks from 2 p.m. onwards. Sometimes some um, caffeinated drink can actually cause increase uh, going mm -hmm. to the toilet, the frequency going to mm -hmm. the toilet at night. Do not go to the toilet out of habit. If you don't have like muscle weakness around the area causing you to lose um pass urine out of control, um don't every time see toilet, then you want to go. La. We uh actually we should actually train our bladder capacity to make it a bit stronger so that we can actually have more volume uh, inside our bladder instead of like oh uh, if not next time you find that every 15 minutes I want to go to the toilet. La. So for elderly, I will recommend that you all use the elastic rubberized pants so that if you have the urinary problem, so that it's easier for you to remove and, and uh, go to the toilet. Uh. So you can see here that there's this, uh, commercially, they are actually have this uh, urinary incontinent pad. It actually looks like the female sanitary pads, but actually it's for absorbing of urine. So it's available in all of the shopping marts. Uh. You can actually see there are like different level of uh, incontinence status, how severe is the urinary incontinence, then you can actually, it's a different thickness. Uh. So we can actually paste over the this and then vary. This is the one beside is actually for guys. Uh. So for guys, one there's also uh, products like this available in the market. Um, these are not uh, diapers. So it does not, you know, if you wear diapers, it's actually quite bulky and people will know that you're wearing diapers and it's quite, actually quite embarrassing if you are going out. This actually, um, when if you are actively, still very active outside and you have this urinary problem, so you can actually wear this so that you do not need to um, rush to go to the toilets. But um, please change it if it's soaked. Huh? If not, then uh, we will be worried that there will be some infection. The one here is actually the commode, we call the commode chair, a chair with the hole in the center. Elderly who has difficulty in walking or the toilet is very far away and they have a lot of urine at night can consider to use this at the bedside. Then they can clear the urine in the morning. They do not need to go to the toilet so often. For guys, you can actually buy a urine bottle or pill, place it at the bedside. If you are not steady, it's preferred that your urine bottle or the pills uh, be placed at a chair, on top of the chair at the bedside, uh, so that you do not bend down to reach for the urine bottle. Okay, for our behavior, how our behavior to maintain safety. Okay, so instead of like putting things uh, that commonly used on top of the cupboard, try to put things at a reachable area. Instead of hanging the heavy laundry out of the window, maybe can consider using a hanger or using the clothes threads like it's here. Instead of standing, I always encourage my elderly who has uh, like um, difficulty in balancing or weakness of the legs. Huh? It's actually safer to sit down on a chair, a steady chair uh, or a toilet bowl to wear your pants or remove your pants so that you do not lose balance. If you are comfortable or no one is at home, you can actually wrap a towel and come out to the bedroom, sit on the bed to wear or remove your pants. Some of us like to wear trousers that is like very long or because it's so loose at the waist that we did not go and buy a newer pants or, you know, some of us uh, like um, some of the races, they have the, those long sari or the baju kurong that is actually quite long. So it's actually preferred that the length be at the ankle height so that you can actually see your feet where you are going and not obstruct it nah, so that you will not cause trips. Other things is like um, the use of nightlight that like I mentioned earlier on. Ensure that your walkway is free of clutter. Keep electrical cord away from walkway. Clean up spills as soon as possible. Ensure the furniture are of appropriate height. 
meaning that they cannot be too soft huh? like your bed mattress or the sofa. Sometimes you have difficulty in getting up. Try not to sit on chairs with wheels huh? or try to you know, um, move around with uh, things with wheels. Huh? So that is actually quite dangerous. Uh, of course, apart from your uh, walking aid with wheels, huh, which is uh, prescribed, um, you should not be using uh, furniture with wheels, which is actually quite sleep dangerous. Huh? Use a non sleep mat. Sometimes we can also use the non sleep mat underneath the rug so that to prevent anti sleep property. Install grab bars in the toilet. Um, currently, HDV is actually goes around some of the estate, which is like maybe um, above 30 years old, to do the home improvement program. For um, HDB type of house, uh, which actually already uh, over the HIP program for many years, or they did not choose or opt for the grab bar installation that time, can always call the HDB um, to actually arrange with the contractor. There's this baby project called the ESA. Uh, E-A-S-E, you can actually go to the HDB website to have a look. They actually can install grab bar, maybe six to eight, up to eight grab bars in the toilet so that you can use it or at the entrance of the toilet so that you can cross the curb safely. They also will spray some um, anti-sleep properties on towels to prevent it, to make it anti-sleep. When you are outside, Try to walk on even ground. Avoid taking shortcuts. Uh. Um, be careful when you are taking uneven pathway, like holding on the handrails. Do not rush. I always remind time and again to my elderly patients that um, no need to rush. Uh, you know, you have so many time in the world. <laughs> Do not rush. Try to concentrate when you walk. Don't you know multitask uh, so that you can actually look around and see whether there's any hazards. Do not rush for the traffic light. Just wait for the dead strong of the traffic light if it's like turning red. Do not stand when the bus or transport is moving. Try to sit nearer to the exit door or public transport. Then you will not be um, worried uh, that if the bus stops and open the door and you cannot make it to the doorway. Use the lift instead of the escalator if you are not steady on your feet. For elderly who is actually not steady in walking, try to use a walking aid, a proper one instead of the umbrella. There are actually two types of umbrella. One is actually the normal umbrella, which look like a walking stick. The other type is actually a real walking state that they make it look like an umbrella. So the difference is actually the weight. Uh, you can actually check out the weight of the, the umbrella walking state. The, one, the real walking state one is actually a bit heavier. Regularly check and change the stopper if it's worn out. How can I check the height of the walking aid? So normally the physiotherapist who prescribe the walking aid will actually tell you or if you are buying on your own the walking stick, you can actually uh, measure the height when you are standing straight, uh, uh, relaxed, with the arms by the, the side. When the handle of the walking aid is actually at the wrist level, that is the correct size. Sometimes if it's like getting too tall for the walking aid, your shoulder might have some pain after a long while. And then if it's too short, then your posture might not be so good anymore. Consult your physical therapist to determine if you need a walking aid and the type of aid which is suitable for you. A lot of my patients ask me, how do I choose a proper footwear? So for a property of footwear, we will prefer the elderly to choose something with lace or Velcro so that it's easier to put on. And also lace and velcro um, hold the foot more firmly instead of those like slip on shoes. White and deep toe box to allow plenty of room for toe movement and comfort. And especially for those with feet deformity. You can see here that the heel cup is firm, uh, not so flimsy. That's why you cannot uh, actually slip on. Uh. It's actually better if you can sit down and wear your shoes. 
Firm Hill Cup actually provides support when walking. The heel should be low and wide to provide more contact with the ground and prevent slipping. Do not try to wear shoes which is actually not your correct size. Huh? Try to have a correct size shoe so that your feet can actually uh, move around freely and it does not drag when you walk and also prevent cons and calluses. The source here, how do I know that it's an anti-slip property? And sees that if there's a lot of these um, catches, uh, the deep line will be the anti-slip properties of the sole. And it should, not be, it should be thin enough for your feet to read the ground to prevent slipping. Now, try not to wear shoes that is like having a lot of uh, anti-slip properties, uh, like the whole shoes is rubberized. Uh. So these shoes, uh, if you are not lifting your feet, you might end up tripping. And rubberized shoes, uh, if too much rubber, if you are in the very wet flooring, you might actually slip. So, few some of the risk factors of um, falls leading to falls and of course tell you some of the tips to reduce your risk of falls or just summarize some take-home message if you cannot remember the whole chunk of it nah, after today's session so some of your take-home messages will be go for regular eye checkups maintain a well-balanced or calcium rich diet exercise regularly to improve your strength and balance Review your medications with your doctor. Practice safety behaviors. Use suitable walking aids which are prescribed by your therapist. Wear proper footwear and shoes. Okay. With this, um, that is the end of my presentations. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Sister Yen Ling. Um, yep, so now we'll be moving on to our Q&A session. So if you have any questions that you wish to um, ask our speaker, Sister Yenling, today, you can submit them via our Q&A platform. So uh, meanwhile, do submit your question while our speakers will take some time to also browse through the submitted questions. Yeah, so I think today's talk has been very useful. You know, like a lot of tips that personally uh, I have learned. <laughs> And also better understand the common risk for um, fall preventions. So um, yeah, similarly, if you have any other questions related to today's topic, um, do submit them via the Q&A platform. Okay. Yeah, I have uh, some question here. I'll just try to answer answer the first question by uh, Mr. Daniel Tan. If a person accidentally fall, what must the person do and what follow-up to do? So if a person fall down, most of the time my other patients will say that that is... Um, um, I don't know whether is it me for saying going around that you cannot help the person if they fall down, you know, they have to get up on their own. So, okay, so so actually, if a person fall down, first you have to check whether the person has any injuries that they sustain during the fall. So if they have no major injuries or pain, and if they are still quite alert and conscious, you can actually ask them to actually see whether help them to get up or if there's a chair or bed around you can actually ask them to use it as a more sturdy support nah? use the arm to try to use the support of this sturdy furniture to help themselves to stand up and you can assist on the side nah? and then also you have to be wary that the person helping the the person who fall down nah, cannot be too elderly and fragile nah. So the next thing is if the elderly is on any like medications like blood thinner or any osteoporosis condition or if they are not conscious or if they have major injuries like bleeding, it will be more advisable to actually get them to see the doctor immediately to rule out if there is any injuries. 
or you can actually try to observe the elderly for like 24 to 48 hours later to see whether there's any pain, any drowsiness, or if they are started to like um, feeling more giddy or vomiting or unwell. So the next question is the slide tip six. Slide tip six, I think is the vision one, is it? Mr. David? Oh, huh? Six, number six, right? Oh, yeah. tip six. This oh, one, is it? Okay. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, this is the postural um, giddiness precaution. So, just emphasize that whenever you change position, try to side lie, uh, then you get up and then you sit for a while. If possible, maybe you can do some exercises on the legs huh, to move around and then before you try to stand up. Then I have the... Okay, um, Miss Louise Pua is asking that you have often encountered elderly who are resistant to change. So how, how can we help them? So a lot of times we will say that, oh, when we get older, we become more stubborn. But sometimes I think it's our personality. La. And then sometimes also maybe because some memory changes, they may not see the benefit of changing their behavior. You know, that's why it's very difficult to talk to them. So very often, sometimes I will tell the elderly the consequence of um, false first. Lah. If I meet with such an elderly, like, you know, I will scare them a bit to, uh, to tell them that, you know, if you fall down, you might have injuries and you might not be independent because I think a lot of us wants to be independent and don't want to depend on other people. So if they don't want to have injuries and they want to be independent, then they should actually try to change some of the things, our behavior, so that we can actually maintain our independence. Yeah, uh, I hope I answer uh, Louis' questions. So... Um, I have one question about recommendations of exercise to improve balance. So actually, um, exercises to improve balance is actually for elderly who are not steady in walking. We actually quite um concerned if we the exercise may, ma, must be actually targeted to the person. So um, I cannot like you know with the not seeing the patient to recommend any exercises, but there are like few uh, exercises. Actually, you can actually go to the Tantok Seng uh, website, uh, the Tantok Seng library, health library. You can have a search. Uh, there are actually some exercises by the physiotherapist, some simple exercises that you can do to improve your balance and strength. Also, I think the health promotion board, if you go to their website, you can also search for some exercise uh, simple exercises that you can do. If you want a more targeted exercises to improve your balance, then you can actually consult or, or ask your doctor to refer you to a physiotherapist. Then they will be able to assess what is your deficit and therefore give you recommendations uh, on the type of exercises to improve balance. Okay, I have another question asking, is a uh, frame reverter good and how to choose? So normally, um, elderly who use a walking frame. So a walking frame is a for uh, is a whole side one with the roller in front or at the four side. So um actually the roller frame are specifically targeted for a specific group of elderly. Um this will also have to depend on the prescription by your physiotherapist on what type of walking frame is good for you. So generally frame with roller will be good for elderly patients who can't lift up the walking frame to use it, like the arm got some pain or, or they have no, not strong enough to lift up the whole walking frame. And also elderly who cannot actually um, lift up the foot re really very well, huh? like uh, elderly with Kinson disease, then the frame with the roller will be good. Okay, we have the next question that says about any statistics on which area of the home likely for elderly to fall down. <laughs> so actually, I think um, 
Uh, actually, the most common uh, instances of falls are like uh, in the toilets. Uh. So these are the areas where uh, the toilet is actually quite slippery or sometimes um, don't have any grab bars and we are doing activities that is actually high risk. Uh. So in the toilet also because of the water leakage, uh, um, prevent the water from coming out from the toilet, we actually have curbs. So that is the most common area or most of the time we put some rocks huh, after the curbs so that when you step out of the toilet, your feet is not wet and this actually causes increased risk of falls. Huh? Okay, so um, Joe is actually asking, is there a link of the talk that I can share with my friend? Um, uh, so this is actually recorded and then we will put up the link later on. Yeah. Or in the future. So you can actually have, a, if not, you can actually go to the, actually you can visit the Dandok Singh Health Library website and search under fall prevention. I've actually written a booklet there. So um, most of the component of this talk, uh, actually you can actually find the information there in the booklet. Uh, Okay, Win Hong is actually asking, would having a enclosed shower screen helps to minimize the danger of fall during shower? Mm, it might, it, 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 in a way, it minimizes the danger of falls when you are like using the toilet bowl, when you're passing rain or doing your business. But in actually, I will think that a shower screen, um, yeah, it might prevent the area from getting wet, but it does not really minimize the danger of fall during shower. In fact, maybe a grab bar or a chair inside the shower area might be a better option. Okay, um, I hope I answer, I have answered most of the questions already. Yeah. Um, is there still any other questions before we end the talk? Okay, Ken. Um, so thank you so much, everyone, for your participation. We do have a lot of um questions that came in today, and I think it's um it's very good to help us better understand this topic. So if you are also interested in our other health talk that's coming up in March, so here are the details. There's one on Dietitian Day that's happening on the 9th. Hand. If you're interested, you can scan the QR code or access the link so that you can sign up for our upcoming talks. And on top of that, we want to receive uh, more updates on the happenings and so the other talks um, after, you know, in March and April onwards. We also have this um, Facebook page that you can um, actually follow us. And yep. So just give me a moment. Yes, yeah, so I was referring to this um Singapore Patients Conference Facebook page where you can so uh, keep a look out for more of the sexual health happenings and when we have talks and all, we will be posting and updating there too. And I believe Sister Yen Ling have mentioned uh, about TTSH Health Library. So if you are wondering what is this health library all about, please head over. You can key in some keywords to find resources that's related to the keywords that you find. And even for today's topic, you can also find more about fall risk and uh, fall prevention over at Health Library. So before you leave today, we do hope that you can provide us your valuable feedback so that we know how to better improve our health talk for subsequent um, sessions. So here's the QR code and the link will also be shared in the chat box. Okay, we will stay on this page for a little while, but with that, we have come to the end for today's session. So a big thank you to Sister Yen Ling for sharing with us today um, regarding fall prevention and the common risks. So I do hope that you have some takeaways um, from today's session and have enjoyed um, the sharing today. 